time to get back to work here on Connie Selica. We have been playing uh, steering column Tetris with these columns trying to figure out a setup that's going to work and I think we've got it figured out now. Yeah, we're going to pull two or three of these apart, cobble some bits together and hopefully we'll have something that works. Alright, just scratch my leg first Moose, that's important. You got a good leg scratching. So these are our three columns that we're going to tetracize together to make something that fits in Connie. Uh, this is the original steering column out of her which has this recirc ball arrangement at the uh, end of the column that goes to the rack. That's got to go away because we now have a rack and pinion in there which means we need to use a U, uh, what do you call this? A yoke U style. Your yoke style connection like this one off of the AW11 MR2 rack. This rack's too short though. As you can see. So we need to kind of uh, take the bottom half of this and make it fit onto here and retain this, this mounting plate that goes to the firewall, which will seal it all up nicely. This is from an RA65 second gen Celica. We were told that this would bolt in, but it's missing a couple of pieces off of it but we still may make use of this bottom section or this flange. So we're just gonna tear all three down, we're gonna see what makes the most sense in terms of lengths and uh, fitment and all that good stuff, and uh, we'll go from there. So step one here is Mr. Moose is gonna to try to disassemble this AW11 rack. I'm gonna see if I can remove, I'm assuming this is a two piece, so I'll see if I can remove the inner shaft from the outer covering, and then I'll see if I can pull the outer covering out of off the whole shaft so we have access to what we need, which is the shaft, the U-joints, and then the sleeve. You might say this is a day of moose manhandling shafts. Okay. Yeah, she's coming out, huh? Oh! Okay, so it's a squared off pressure fit. I think so, and what's nice is this This is, has actually really nice bearing, because some just use a, a nylon sleeve that are, this is an actual bearing, yeah. bearing in there. Yeah. So this actually sits right at the firewall, yeah. and it supports the end of the steering column yeah. shaft, so that when it makes this downward tilt towards the rack, there's no, it, there's no wobble. Yeah, exactly. We are going to use a slide hammer to slide the sleeve out of its mating um, upper sleeve here. So I've just... Uh, I figure this is the easiest way to do it using oh, yeah. this and I'm going to bring the it's a clever arrangement. Uh, I think it works what I need and then I can then use Oh wow, came apart super easy. So what we have is a collar with bearings, wheel bearing, like ball, small ball bearings. Oh yeah. Which slides in here and as the ball bearings are pressed it basically allows it to rotate a bit if need be. Yeah. It also allows it to compress. This is basically to allow under a crash. Yeah. The exactly. sleeve. It's, it's basically unballs. It's enough tension. It's not going to move normally. Yeah. But in an impact, it allows this to slide in and compress. So that you or I don't smash our faces on the column too hard. Impe impale ourselves essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that is actually not bad. So hopefully this will fit quite nicely in. Uh, the original silica column. Yeah, the problem is it's probably not long enough, so we'll have to think about length again. But well, I don't know because here's the thing: the lower shafts is taller here. Oh, that's true. And look at so this. These are the same length. These end bits are the same length. We might be in business. Yep, exactly. If we do, we have to shorten it a little bit. Damn. Shaft master Moose is about to blast another shaft apart here. This is uh, the original silica one. Have at her. Have a good see if this works. There you go. So you see it's actually the same construction technique <coughs> as this. And you can see where the holes are drilled. They put epoxy in yeah. to retain them, as they did here. Interesting. And I think what this does is another layer of protection. If something has an impact, this will break the epoxy and the shaft will slide. It'll collapse even, even more. Even more. Wow. So yeah. yeah, you can see the little epoxy bits. You know. Double collapsible column then, I guess is what it I was. guess the second layer, I believe that's what that's for. Huh. There's no other reason why you would uh, just glue yeah. Yeah, the yeah. shaft in. But exact same 
uh, swage di diameters, so I'm pretty sure we can make this work. So what we're going to try to do now is pull this uh, original sleeve out of the Selka column so that we can hopefully retrofit the new AEW11 uh, yeah. sleeve into it. Jam that guy at that upper column, yeah. So this should come apart like the other one did. Can we stand on that or no? Yeah. It's coming. Yep. Let me get a bit of a lube, I think, in there. Mm. Lube your shaft, Moose. Lube your shaft. Be afraid, ladies. Moose, is ha Moose has the lube. And a hammer. <laughs> Swing that hammer, bro. This will uh, persuade. Oh. You persuaded your tool, apparently. Oh, yeah. Like butter. Same deal. Very similar, eh? Yeah. So here's, this, here's the. Yeah. Very similar. It's like yeah. the same parts, basically, isn't Essentially, it? Essentially, yeah. This is a bit older. It's so good. it's, this huh. will fit. Amazing. This will fit. So now, why don't, before you stuff that in there, let's compare the length of these two tubes. Because that's... There, it's a little bit shorter. It's like... But this had to go through the firewall. True. So maybe it doesn't matter? Well, that's the thing. What we can do is if we get the bracket... We'll bolt it up and see. Bolt it up with this, without this, just through it. Yeah. Measure where it has to be to the firewall. Let's see if it's in there. If it's in the range. We're probably pretty much good to go because this... Yeah. You know, she goes right in the hole, huh? It. See, there's the epoxy right there. It's sort of the... Yeah, see, there. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's designed to... To collapse, yeah. To collapse. So the question is, we need to replicate that epoxy setup then in some way? I think so. Once we get to uh, final assembly, yeah, um, we'll probably use the same sort of epoxy. We'll have to do a little research on that and see what kind of epoxy they use. Yeah. So Mr. Moose is just bolting in the column with the addition of the AW11 MR2 bits on the far end to see how it fits at the firewall. So just a couple of nuts to hold the column to the dash and we're good to go for a quick test fit. I've left the uh, firewall plate off because the, the end of the shaft is bigger than the hole right now. Yeah. We haven't enlarged it yet. Yeah, story of my life. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Uh-oh, we got a guest star. It's the Subi guy driving a car. Like what's this? Street racers just showing up randomly at my house. Yeah. Bunch of troublemakers. The bearded wonder is here. Don't you have a shop to run or something? Come on, man. It's Saturday. Just Sunday. roll in here it's revving Sunday. up like a, some kind of a street racer? Yeah, nice neighborhood. Just want to let everyone know we're keep, assholes. Keep it classy, buddy. Keep it classy. <laughs> How's it looking in there, Mr. Moose? Looking good. I mean, we obviously we don't have the inner firewall plate, but I can let it sit. It sits right up at the firewall. I got full rotation of the shaft. Yeah. And when we put in the extended shaft we picked up, it's a touch long, but it is well, 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 well within uh, limits. Yeah, we can wiggle that in there, no we, problem. We can either trim it back or slide it deeper into the, uh, into the pickup. I should mention that this, this uh, intermediate shaft is from Technotoy Tuning. It's, uh, it's a Mark III Supra piece, but you can't find them at wrecking yards anymore. It's super rare, so they put their own version of it into production, but it's, it's to the length of a Mark III Supra, and it's commonly used when adapting rack and pinions into old Toyotas like this. So we did a test fit earlier, and part of the test fit was to see how far out we had to bring this interior shaft. And when I line this up roughly with the firewall, I made a mark. So yep. what this means is the original bearing, is you can see the polished area. Yep. So we're a bit short by an inch and a half. So what we're gonna have to do for proper support, we have the original um, Outer shaft from the Celica. Yeah, we'll yeah. do. We'll just have it take it to our fabricator. Yeah. We'll do a really nice job welding the thing up, extending by about two inches. Mm -hmm. So we got enough penetration that this inner sleeve will fit properly and yeah. be supported properly. The second half is this has to be welded attached to the firewall. So we have oh. this interior bracket which bolts to the firewall, oh, and oh, yeah. and this is where the original uh, steering shaft bolted to. Yeah. 
So it's one the wrong size. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this original, this is from the later generation. Uh, That's the AW11 MR2. Yep, MR2, thank you. Okay. We're going to basically have this cut. Just trim that out. Trim that all so we get a nice flat surface. A flush surface, yeah. And okay. it'll be then welded onto, that. onto this. What's nice about this is this will then put our U-joint assembly just the side of the firewall. So, so it has full rotation without yeah. binding. Yeah. And then you saw in the earlier video, we have the extended length intermediate, yeah. which goes between here and, and the the rack. Uh, the rack. Yeah. And we may have to do a little bit of adjustment in length. It may be a little bit long, but hey, that's, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Moose had to head off to Calgary to teach cowboys how to be real men. So that meant I needed to go and consult with our homies at NV Auto to take care of some of this fabrication work. On to step two here, joining the column to that mounting plate. You can just tack it in place to make sure it was nice and centered and everything. And now it's, uh, now that we're happy with its position, it's just gonna finish off that well. Here you can see NV's master fabricator, Vin, measuring out two inches on our spare column so that he can weld it onto the column we're going to use. You can see he's uh, beveled the edges here so that he can uh, fusion weld it. Is that what you call it, Vin? Uh, no, I will be putting filler rod in it. Okay, so there is a bit of filler going in there, but the idea is for it to be a really, you know, uh, low. low profile weld so that it can still slide into that uh, outer column tube. All right, after Vin has completed his welding, we have us a custom steering column ready to go into Conrad. Pretty exciting times, and uh, Dove here, who does not do any welding, because he's, you know, he's a desk jockey. Just Whatever. Admiring this gasket that Moose no. decided to murder for no apparent reason. Mo Moose ruined this. Why did right. he murder the gasket? I don't know. Moose got excited he and just then... felt like murdering something. Yeah, sure. We're just going to call... We're going to call Toyota up and say, Hey, we need that gasket for the... Yeah, exactly. 70-whatever <laughs> Corolla. Not happening. Anyway, uh, we're going to reuse it. We'll use a little bit of, uh, you know... Snot. Urethane snot on there and we'll, we'll make it all happy. Thanks, Ben. High five. Yeah. Dirty gloves. That's all right. That's how we roll here. That's when I realized the bearing wasn't going to fit in the column without a little porting. So I busted out the air tool and Dove, well, he forgot to turn on the mic. All right. We'll call that job done. Put my old uh, cylinder head porting skills to, uh, to the test on this one. Got it all cleaned up. It's uh, smooth enough. I think that the bearing should just fall right in place and we can bolt it in. There's these uh, bolt holes on the side that actually hold the bearing in place, so don't have to worry about it falling out. And uh, cleaned up the, uh, the butt joint down here a bit too. Just threw a coat of paint on this bottom column piece, and my God, this thing looks like it's ready to go onto a factory race car. Or a 1977 Toyota Celica, one or the other. Moose is back from Calgary where he was teaching cowboys how to be real men and now he's going to teach me how to be a real man by mounting up this steering column. Uh, test fit time Moose, what do you think? Yeah, well I mean we had beautiful work at NV. I mean it's uh, the fact that you can still slide over the welded area is beautiful so it's yep. really really nice, it's where it needs to be. Yeah. I mean this thing looks almost OE. It I does mean, look good, yeah. It looks really really nice. So. I did a quick little bit of measurements and we're getting not lots of engagement. Yeah. So we don't have to, ex this does not look like we have to extend the inner uh, steering shaft. Yeah. So we got loads of engagement, which is great. So we're going to do a dry fit without the bearing, put it in place, see how everything fits. If it looks really good, we'll install the bearing, um, glue up the shaft, and then uh, connect the, uh, the secondary uh, between our coupling and the, and the rack. Let's get this bad boy in. Time for test fit number two. Just bolting it to the firewall under there. Yep, yeah, just bolting the firewall so we kind of have everything kind of located where it's going to live. But there we go. All right. So look at that. She's bolted up. She's bolted to the firewall. And let's go have a look in the engine bay.
Well, looky here. We have a steering column poking out the firewall and it looks, well, it looks OE, doesn't it, Moose? It looks factory spec. Because it is just not how it came from the factory, but factory bits. Factory bits, so uh, let's uh, slam that intermediate shaft in there, Moose, and see how it all fits up. Also, we got the long extended length, was the third gen uh, that Supra? Is third gen Supra, yeah, yeah, or Mark III, as they like to call them. The longer one, because this is the original, which yeah. is, as you can see, quite a bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> Considerably shorter, yes, actually. Yes, it's like comparing me and Moose, isn't it? I'll let you guys decide who's the short one and who's the long one. Ah, oh, look at that. This looks good. So we got plenty oh, of extra shaft length. Yeah. I mean, I haven't put the pinch bolts in yet, but I'm just gonna go around and it's gonna do a little turny, turny, turny. Oh my God, we have steering, everybody. Yeah. We have steering. It's time for the moose happy dance. Oh. Happy dance, happy dance, <laughs> happy dance. Since we've got the steering in, why not do a quick test fit of our new Corbo GTS2 seats and maybe do a little simulated driving in there, Moose. So decided to go with these rather than a super vintage racing bucket or anything, you know, off the beaten path. Pete actually used these seats in his S13 and he loved how comfortable they were. So he recommended them and I thought, why not? Let's give it a shot. I've never used a, Cor a Corbo seat before, but uh, very impressed by the, I love the design. I think it's a really cool design. There's nice aggressive bolstering in it, but it's still a reclining bucket. So it's gonna give me good comfort when I drive this car on the street. I've already sat in it, it's very comfortable. And I went with the shaved base option, which uh, they shave about an inch of height off the seat cushion here. So that'll give me a lower seating position and it also makes these uh, lower side bolsters more aggressive, which I like for the track. And the most amazing part is they make a seat bracket for the late first gen Celica. As you can see here, 75 to 77 Celica bolts right in. They send instructions, but I'm pretty sure we can handle it. I'm just gonna bolt this to the, the bottom of the seat. We'll slap it in there and uh, we'll go for a rip. All right, so this is the front. So we'll go front, come sa. See my French moose? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for Impressive. It. Let's hold one, that line up nice. All right. The seats come with these nice uh, Allen, whoop, these nice Allen head bolts. Moose has his Allen socket set with him. It's all coming together, buddy. So while I'm fumbling with these bolts, I should mention also that these GTS2 seats can be had in a bunch of different fabrics. You can get them in leather, you can get them in gray fabric, you can get them in suede and combinations thereof. You can also opt for other stuff like inflatable lumbar support. There's actually a heated module that you can put in to add heat to the seat. Uh, and you can also put a uh, sub strap uh, opening in the bottom cushion if you want to use like a five or six point harness with them. So it's a very flexible seat in terms of how you order it. You can set it up in a bunch of different ways. Kind of OE-like in terms of how you'd option out a, a car interior. Yeah, yeah, and they're very affordable. For a pair of these, they're $738 as I ordered them for two seats. Yeah. Normally you'd spend $700 on one seat, so very impressed by the price point on them too. And so far, everything is just bolting up. We'll see how well the rails fit in the chassis in a minute, but uh, so far all signs point to win, people. Well, I'm stuffed in here like a Christmas sausage, and my head is against the roof. My knees are almost against the dash. I'm six inches too far forward and the seat is all the way back, and I'm way too high so we have some work to do to make this seat fit in the car I think we're gonna have to end up cutting the factory mounts that are they sit really high off the floor I think we're have to gonna cut those out and get the seat right down on the floor to get me the headroom I need and to get the seat further back so so the challenge is the building a custom hot rod moose things don't always uh, fit the first time so uh, but I will say the seat is very comfortable and it's just kind of cool to be sitting in here turning the steering wheel that's a wrap on this episode and in the next one i think we're going to end up pulling out the motor and tranny again hopefully for the last time so that we can uh, bolt a bunch of cool parts up from sq engineering out of australia they have a solution for us so that we don't have to cut the center tunnel to fit the shifter in they've got a bunch of other cool stuff that's going to be going on the engine side so we'll get to all of that soon
<laughs> happy dance. Happy dance. Happy dance. <laughs> happy dance. <laughs> <laughs>